Today's video is going to be a combination of a few things. I'm going to show you how to make looping GIFs in Blender or looping animations. And to demonstrate it, I'm going to show off the scene that I made for the robot render challenge in Discord last month. Let's go. Oh, it's the wrong monitor. Ah. We're back. So this is the final result of my render for the render challenge. And if I show this in Discord, you can see that it actually loops. For some reason, it's tiny. Can I zoom in? Yes. It's quite low quality because of the compression of the GIF, but there you go. So it started off like this. I just did a single frame and then I thought this would be quite a cool thing to turn into a GIF. And then I thought, why not make it loop? And that's kind of how I ended up in this situation. As you can probably see at the end of the live stream, it looked like this. So it came quite a long way. I've basically changed the texturing on the whole thing because I thought this wasn't particularly good. I always struggle a bit when I'm live to actually like troubleshoot and think of things on the spot because I can feel that there's lots of people watching me, which is always a bit strange. So I knew I wasn't super happy with this while I was doing it, but I also couldn't really think of what to do to make it better. So once I ended the live stream, I kind of went away and improved it a lot, which is kind of how we ended up here. Let me open the scene. So this is the final render scene, as you can see. I used a load of the assets that I made in my video about making environments. So a load of industrial assets like this air compressor, and this is an air conditioning unit. Uh, I got these like metal boxes on the wall, this sign. I made a load of lamps and stuff and metal girders. This was really good because I could just chuck it into the scene really quickly and build something with quite a lot of detail without having to model all of this stuff. And I started using the asset manager on this project for the first time. Um, which I haven't really done before. So if I go, ow, oh, it's not set up. Ow, oh, no, that's embarrassing. It's because I'm using a new version of Blender. Uh, file pass. Oh, it is set up. Why is it not working? Okay, I guess the asset manager is broken in this version of Blender. Experimental interface. Cool. Well, that's really helpful. What? Uh, well, I guess that's that then. Fantastic. Extended asset browser. Try to turn that on. Oh, there we go. Eh, uh, okay. Jesus Christ, <laughs> the settings change so often when you download the daily builds. Okay, so yeah, like I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted by the Blender development. Oh, now my Wacom's not work. For God's sake. This is probably the worst video I've ever recorded. God knows what this is going to be like to edit. Come on, Wacom. Okay, it's working. Right, we're back. Since I made that video, I've made even more assets like shipping containers and stuff. And all of this stuff is going to be on my Patreon by the time this goes up. So if anyone wants to grab it, you can grab it from there. But the beauty of making all of this stuff as assets is that I can literally just go, okay, I want this in the shot and I can drag and drop it in. Probably not put a cliff in a robot scene, but you know what I mean. So there's just all these machinery parts and I can go in and say, oh, I think this would look cool on the desk. And then I can put it in there and drag it in. It's a really quick way to work. So at the end of the live stream, I had the robot. And once I'd done the retexturing, I just opened up my asset browser and dragged a load of stuff in that I thought would work. And then literally in about 10 minutes I had a pretty much full-on scene so it was really really easy to build this very quickly and this is what it all looks like with the materials once it finishes loading the shaders so yeah this is what it all looks like so I've got some nice sort of grungy metal materials on here got the metal wall and then these are lights that I set up uh, this is what it looks like in rendered mode I've got optics on which is really good for viewing stuff in real time which really helps with the new edition of the 3090 it's super fast so the static render was something like this frame here where it's just using the blowtorch on whatever he's holding and I thought it'd be kind of cool to have him like use the blowtorch on it have some spark shooting out which will be quite visually interesting um, and have the light playing off of him from the blowtorch and then basically he throws it away reaches down to the desk and then it starts again so the looping point is basically he picks up the thing throws it away and then here it starts again and the next frame basically becomes the first frame and the trick behind this is in the rigging and the animation and it's a really simple trick so basically all you have to do is make sure that the first frame of the animation is also pretty much the last frame so when it gets to the end it's also kind of back in the starting position the way I did it for this is I took all of the keyframes on the robot I selected all the keyframes on the first frame I press shift D and I duplicated them and moved them over here to the end and what you actually want to do is have it one frame after the last frame of your animation to make the loop seamless the reason you don't want to do it on the last frame of the animation is because otherwise you'll have two frames that are the same when it starts again so the last frame is literally before it gets to its reset pose which is here and then when it starts again it goes to the next frame which is here but it's also here because these two frames have the same keyframes hopefully that makes sense it's a bit of a long-winded way of explaining it so then basically when you play it on the run it goes all the way through the animation gets to the second last frame and then just starts again and then from there the trick is really just making it exciting so i made the blowtorch out of a cylinder that i just scaled down at the ends to make it kind of that blowtorchy shape um, I keyframed it to scale down into the blowtorch gun so that it starts off off and then it starts here. This mesh is an emission material, so it's really, really bright. And so without this, this is basically what's doing all of the lighting in the scene, apart from the edge lights. 
to unhide this. You can see it lights him up completely from the front, which looks really cool. Um, and it keyframes to turn off and stuff here, and then it turns off again at the end of the shot. Sparks are a really simple particle simulation. It's just made from this icosphere here. The icosphere is parented to the hand here, so it moves wherever the hand moves. And then I just have a particle system on this that has some velocity in the z-axis. So I set it to five, which means it will basically shoot out this way mostly. And I use the spark shader that I've talked about in a few different videos now. It's just this. It's a particle info node, and then you use the age and the lifetime into a math node and set it to divide. Basically, this means as they get older, they will get darker. And then you can use a color ramp to pick and choose the colors you want the sparks to be. So it starts off white, and then as they get a bit older, they go to an orange and then slightly darker red color eventually. This is running into an emission shader, which makes them cast light on the scene. I set the lifetime of the particles to be 26 frames, which just means over the course of about a second, they go from being really bright to pretty much disappearing off screen and getting darker. And between the sparks and the blowtorch, that's pretty much all of the interactive lighting going on in the scene. Then, like I said, I set up the emission planes here just to add some edge lighting onto the robot. So this is with the lighting I set up. If I hide them, it looks like this. So these lights up here aren't actually doing anything, but I wanted their lighting to feel like it was motivated and actually doing something on the robot. So I just created these emission planes here and they're set to not render in the camera, but they're casting light on the scene. And so that edge light makes it feel like it's coming from these lights up here, which works quite nicely. This whole project file with the animation and all of the assets and stuff is available on Patreon if anyone's interested. And then once that's done, I basically went into Nuke and just added some glows and flares and stuff onto it to make it a bit more exciting. And that looks something like this. So to start off with, I just have the render straight out of Blender. If I use a layer contact sheet, you can see all of the channels I rendered. I specifically made the emission pass so that I can do some stuff with the glows from the blowtorch and the sparks and the eyes and the lights up here. And I also rendered a utility pass which has the cryptomats in it so I could use the cryptomats to isolate a few things in the shot, like the eyes and the sign in the back and the mask on the face. So starts off with the raw render. Then I graded down the eyes a little bit. It looks really subtle here, but a bit later down when I had the glow, they were going a bit nuts. So I just made them a bit darker. Then I graded down the sign in the background just so I didn't draw too much attention to itself. That's pretty subtle. I also graded down the mask slightly and took out the saturation just because it was a bit of an intense blue in the render. Then I separated out the emission pass and I isolated the different parts of the emission. So here we have the blowtorch. Then we have the eyes and the lights in the background. And down here, I think, is the sparks. And I put some different levels of glow on all of these. Then we have the bloom from the lights up here. This is really subtle, but it just makes and bloom outwards a little bit which looks quite nice and then I also blurred this quite a bit and then plus that back on top as well so as well as this kind of glow I made a much softer one and that looks like this so before and after just kind of makes it feel like there's a bit of atmosphere in the space which is quite nice and then there's the glow on the sparks this is quite subtle as well doesn't really do much especially as they get darker so that's what that looks like then I did something kind of fun with volume rays in Nuke. So I took the pass of the eyes and then I did a bit of color correction to it. And then this is a bit of a hacky way of doing this, but I bought in a cube that's parented to the head of the robot um, from Blender that's animated. I ran this through a scanline render in Nuke so that I have an alpha for it. And then all I did is add a 2D tracker onto the alpha and I tracked its location. So basically I now have a tracker for kind of up here above the robot's head. And I used this as a position to fire volumetric rays through like this. So basically I had this point up here, which is the tracker. It's firing through the eyes and creating this cool effect so that it moves with the eyes. Then this goes on top as well. This is really subtle. And in fact, in the end comp, you can hardly see it. Probably more obvious on a frame like this. It just adds some kind of like subtle beams coming out of the eyes, which looks quite nice. And then the last thing I did is add a kind of streaky horizontal flare coming from the blowtorch. I talked about this setup in a video before as well. It's basically taking the highlights, I eroded them down slightly to make the flare a bit thinner, and then it just blurs them at loads of different increments like this, and then pluses them together, which gives you this kind of look. And then I just made it a bit blue and put that on top of the footage, and it looks like this. So there we go. That's how I made that robot scene. I think it turned out really cool and I was really happy with it. And I think a lot of people in Discord thought it was cool as well. Like I said, the model of the robot and the animation scene and all of the assets that I made in this are available on my Patreon if you're interested. And hopefully that answers the question for the people that were asking how to make it into a looping animation in Discord as well. If you made it this far into the video, you're probably someone that watches quite regularly. Um, and I have a bit of an announcement. I'm going to be away for a few weeks or away from the YouTube channel. I've got a freelance project going on in my spare time that's going to be quite busy. So I think until the end of September, I'm going to have my hands full. So there might be a bit of a gap in videos I'm not sure what's going to happen I might get some stuff up but I'm not going to pressure myself into uploading because I'm going to be very busy so if you don't see me for a few weeks that's probably where I'm going to be but I'll be back in October and things will go back to normal something to look forward to though I've rendered all the shots for the treasure planet video now so once I get a few days to sit down a weekend after this freelance project finishes I will composite all of them and it will look amazing thank you for watching take care everyone and I'll see you very soon well, I ain't gonna live like this no more trouble comes when the barmaid pours Another four man who should have found the door. Oh, when I get going, you can hear me roar. And I know I can't live like this.